Hey, this is Toby. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we continue to code our pattern recognition EA for the MetaTrader 5 platform. Okay, so let's just jump right into Visual Studio Code. And this is where we left off with our pattern recognition file um, here to draw the pattern on the chart. Let's hit compile just to make sure we have no mistake here. And now we can start here with a simple for loop because we want to um, yeah, display each close price on the chart as a arrow or a dot maybe. So let's write a for loop here for our counter integer i. We start at zero as long as i is less than our pattern bars variable here. We want to increase the counter by one like this. Um, again, if you have not seen the first part where we started with this EA, I will link the first part up here and also the second one. Um, so if you want to follow with this EA, make sure to watch the first part and second part first and then come back to this video. Okay, so here in the for loop, we now create an object or first of all, maybe a name for each dot. So a string variable called name. And here we just um, call this pattern bar. And we need a unique name for each object. Uh, so we don't replace um, the objects. So I will just add here, um, cast it to a string, our counter i, and add a semicolon. Okay, now we can create object. So object create. Here the chart ID is null for the current chart. The name is now our name variable. And the type object um, arrow and sub window is zero. So the main chart window and now time and price. So for the time, I will just use the I time here. And here we need to specify the symbol. So underscore symbol and the time frame is underscore period for the current time frame of the chart. And now the shift we want to shift this to our pattern bars variable here and we subtract our counter like this. Um, because pattern bars here is the number of bars in our pattern. And yeah, if we subtract our counter, we will create an object on each bar. Uh, also, yeah, of course, this is only the first time coordinate here. Now we need also the price coordinate, so comma. Uh, of course, we need to close this I time here, comma, and now the price coordinate for our object. I will do this in the next line, maybe here. So here we can use now the pattern array, um, our counter I. Now, of course, we need to shift each value maybe to the previous close price because the pattern of course um, can be from a few years ago. So the price could be completely different and we will not see the pattern if we just draw it um, at the current time. It will be way above or below our current price um, of the symbol. So we need to shift this. Um, I think we can do this if we subtract just the difference between each um, value or between the value of the last pattern value and the close price. So yeah, let's use the pattern error again. And here inside for the index, we now use our pattern bars variable and we subtract one. So basically we use the last value of our pattern and we subtract um, the close price of the previous bar. So I close of the current symbol, current period, and for the shift, yeah, just one for the previous close price. And let's close this object rate uh, function call here with some brackets at a semicolon. Uh, let's hit compile. There should be no mistake. Yeah, let's see if this works. I don't know yet, but it makes sense to me. Um, before we test it, 
let's also change some properties. So object set um, integer here. We want to change the color maybe. So null, the name of our object and object object property color and the color we just set it to color blue like this and we also want to change the yeah, the style of the object or of the arrow so we can set this with object set integer and here again chart id null and the name and the object property i think it's arrow code yeah now let's see what we want here if i highlight this press f1 um we should get the help uh, object arrow code arrow code for okay there's no list um i would just google this real quick uh, this is mqf4 um, yeah maybe that's also think valid for mql5 uh, so maybe we just want a dot like this small dot here so 159 for the error code yeah let's try this okay 1159 one, at a semicolon and that's all we need to do here in the straw pattern function we have no return type um, okay so let's hit compile here using the script and let's test this in the meta five platform so this is just a default euro dollar one hour chart and i will start the a now here okay and we can already see the pattern here on the chart so now later when we calculate the correlation um, if the current close prices here of the last bars match our pattern we should get a very high correlation and therefore trigger maybe to set a sell stop or buy stop or just take some action of course this is just a random pattern right now uh, you can of course load a more unique pattern into your csv file or any pattern really um, but yeah we will calculate the correlation later let's go back to visual studio code and here first of all let's take a look at the on init function so we now we draw the pattern here i think that's it for the on init for now uh, let's take a look at the on tick function so here the first step we only need the a to operate really on open prices because we only get a new pattern here when we have a new bar so we don't need to check this on every tick this will just save some compute um, so let's write a comment here check if current tick is a bar open tick and with a simple if statement here exclamation mark is new bar this returns false we just return for on tick and let's create this function in our custom function section so let's go down um, after the draw pattern function here yeah check for new bar open tick um, so the function is of type boolean is new bar no parameters we return uh, false here in the end very important and here we just yeah declare a static variable of type um, date time called previous time and we set this to zero here and we also declare another variable of type date time called current 
time and we set this to i time basically of the current bar time of the symbol so underscore symbol underscore period and yeah for the shift we just use zero so the current bar open time and then we write a simple if statement and check if the previous time here is not equal to the current time in this case and let me scroll up a little bit we set the current time to the previous time so previous time equals current time and very important we return true so we have a new bar open tick and otherwise we return false here okay let's hit compile that's all we need to do for this is new bar function and now we can use it at the start of our on tick function here to check for a new bar open tick next step here in the on tick would be to get the current symbol tick into a tick variable so for this i will go to the global variable section and here at the beginning i will just declare a new mql tick variable called tick um yeah this is actually a structure here predefined structure and we can use it now here so let's write a comment get current symbol tick and we can write here in a if statement with a exclamation mark symbol info tick to get the current tick of the current symbol into our tick structure here if this returns false we want to print maybe a message uh, failed to get symbol tick like this and we return for the on tick function and maybe we do this in a separate line here so it's easier to read so we get the current symbol tick into our tick variable and else if this fails we return with a message here okay let's hit compile we don't have any mistakes and next step really would be to calculate the correlation of the pattern with the last bars of our symbol so for this first of all we need to get the close prices of the last bars yeah and to get the close prices it's very easy we write a comment here get close prices and we can declare a array close array maybe for all the close prices it's a dynamic array and we can use the copy close function here with the current symbol um, current period and now there are a few um yeah variations of that um, copy close function and we want to use here the last one where we can specify the start position and the count so the start position is of course our uh, previous bar so one and the count is our pattern bar variable here and yeah then we save that the result or the prices into our close array like this and that's all we need to do and now we should have the last bars here the last close prices into our close array and we can use that to calculate the co correlation with our pattern okay let's hit compile again so let's calculate the correlation here i will add a comment calculate correlation and yeah there's a predefined function we can use for this we need to include a file so let's go to the include section here and after our position info line we include another file hashtag include and the function is located in the math folder um, statistics and it's called stat.mqh so include this file here hit compile and now we should be able to use that function the function is called inside a if statement with a exclamation mark and is called math um, correlation pearson so this will calculate the correlation of two data sets um, first 
array here is our pattern. Second data set is our close array. And the result is stored in our um, in a variable called corel. Uh, we will declare this here for the statement. So of type double corel for correlation. Um, and this will give back a result between minus one and one for the correlation. So one is yeah, exactly the same data set. Um, zero is no correlation and minus one is anti-correlated. Um, so that's it. If this returns false, we also want to print a message maybe for the user failed to calculate correlation and we return for the on, on tick function. Okay, this should do the trick. Let's compile. And so we are able to test it. I also want to print out the correlation here. So I write a simple print statement here. Correlation. And here we add our variable coral like this. And so we are also able to see the pattern on the chart. We will also call the draw pattern function here in the end. So let's compile again using the script. Um, make sure you don't have any mistakes. And now we can test it in a strategy tester. So let's open up the strategy tester. Here in the MetaTrader 5 platform, select the EA, symbol Euro dollar, one hour. Of course, it makes sense to use the same symbol um, as you used for yeah, creating the pattern. I will just use the last few weeks here uh, for the test, also visual test. Um, yeah, no delay. Every tick, open price only is fine. Um, okay. We have no inputs right now. So let's start this test and let's see. Okay, it's already done. I have to slow it down a little bit, start it again. Okay, now we can see the pattern here. And yeah, we also see the correlation is pretty low right now. And I will use F12 key now to jump bar after bar and we can see can see the correlation is changing here. So let's actually see if we get a high correlation at some point, maybe here with this big bar. Um, then of course we can check if the correlation is above a certain threshold, then we want to take or place a order. Okay, here we can see uh, the correlation is one. So yeah, basically the same data because this is actually the, these are the close prices I use to create the CSV file. So our correlation um, calculation is working. This is of course the perfect correlation here um, of one. So we can see it's working fine. Um, yeah. And now the next step really is to check if the correlation is high enough um, yeah, to take some action with our EA, to place a order, to take a trade. Um, yeah, we will do this in the next part. Remember, if you are interested in learning MQL5 from the ground up or even more advanced stuff, take a look at my website for the alpha and beta programming course. And I will see you in one of the next videos. Have a great day. Good trades. Bye bye.